You could warm up Mars over time with greenhouse gases by the wonderful Elon Musk. What we're going to cover today, we're going to have a quick run through the gas laws. We're going to have a look at the theory behind it. Don't go to sleep just yet. Uh, do some worked examples against uh, each person whose law is named after and uh, have a look at some past paper questions in the second half of today's video. First of all, a huge thanks to you all for uh, subscribing and listening and thank you to my merry band of higher level year 11 chemists who uh, participated unknowingly in the making of this presentation. We'll begin where most presentations begin with Avogadro's law. Avogadro, a uh, very famous chap in chemistry. We've got the 6.02 times 10 to the 23, the uh, constants who bears his name and will continue to do so, I'm sure from this point and many points uh, in the past forward. And it's the relationship between the uh, volume of a gas and the number of moles. As we can see from the, gra the graph, as we increase the number of moles, we increase the volume. It doesn't matter which gas it is. It could be nitrogen, carbon dioxide. It could be gaseous RNA. I don't know, even if that thing exists. It makes sense. All of them make sense, which, which is good because science should make sense. Intuitively, we know that if you pump air into a ball, then as you put more gas molecules in, the, the, the more molecules do add, the greater the volume it is. There's, there's, there's just more of it. Okay. First point on the gas laws. The units you put in are the units that you get out. The second point is when we're doing temperature, which we'll come to shortly, you must have it in Kelvin. So point one, units in are units out. Let's have a look in this example. So we have 10 moles of CO2 has a volume of 245 litres or decimeters cubed of the same thing at 25 degrees C and one atmosphere pressure. If five moles of carbon dioxide, so now we've got a new N, are removed from the same temperature and pressure, so we always have to keep the temperature and pressure constant if we are working with volume and moles, what is the new volume? Well, we can see Avogadro's law is that V1 over N1 is V2 over N2. Well, where do the V1 and the N1 come from? Well, V1 and M1 are the ones that, that you know. Some people like to call them the initial volume, as you can see on the legend on the left-hand side. And V2, we often like to call the final volume. If you just keep the ones that you know together and the one that you don't know with the new variant, the, the new uh, 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 number, then you, you're good to go. So V1 over N1. So V1 is 245 litres. N1 is 10. That's the known at the beginning. And then the final one, the new volume, well, that's what we want to know. But we do know the new number of moles, five, five carbon dioxide. So put the data in, we've got two, four, five over 10 is V2 over five. Substitute, rearrange, V2 is 122.5. Let's call it 120 liters or decimeters cubed. If you put CM cubed into there, you'd come up with CM cubed. If you put, I don't know, barrels of oil in, you get barrels of vapor, oil vapor out. Okay, Charles Law, V1 over T1 is V2 over T2. Okay, so we've got low temperature, low volume, high temperature, high volume. Makes sense. If you're not sure, maybe don't do this, but this is a very good <laughs> mental thing to do. Um, throw a can of um, gaseous deodorant, antiperspirant, into a fire, and you'll quickly see the relationship between volume and temperature. Because indeed, volume is completely uh, related to temperature by a constant. And if we increase the volume, we increase the temperature. Again, as in the previous uh, example, 21 degrees, 210 degrees C, I'll read, has a volume of eight meters cubed. What is the volume at minus 23 degrees C? This is often a paper one style question, but with kind of um, easier to mental arithmetize numbers. And um, what do we notice? Well, the second point, which I uh, mentioned had been the preamble, is that your degrees C must be changed to Kelvin. You can, these, these equations don't work if you don't use Kelvin. So the difference of zero degrees C is 273 Kelvin. So we've got 210, so we need to add 273. So V1 over T1, well V1 was eight, and T1 was 210 plus 273, which is 483. So that's eight over 483. V2 is what we're trying to find out, but it's a negative degree C. So we need to take that away from 273, which is 250. 
substitute solve 4.14 meters cubed. Okay, meters cubed in, 8 meters cubed in, 4.14 meters cubed out. What you put in, you get out. Temperature must be in Kelvin. Thank you, Charles. Here's Boyle's law, look at that. The piston's going up and down, fantastic. Pressure's going up, the temperature's constant, don't forget, if you're just using these in their uh, singular form, then the other uh, variables must be kept constant. For Boyle's law, P1V1 is P2V2. Pressure can be in any unit, uh, volume can be in any unit, but what you put in, you must get out. So here is the um, old school unit, just for uh, use in this presentation. 5.6 litres of gas, 1.5 atmospheres. Compress it, squeeze it together. What's its volume? Um, so its volume is 4.8, so its volume's gone down. What will be the new pressure? Okay, we expect it to be more, don't it? Because the volume's gone down, and that's the relationship. You can see the graph being plotted on the left-hand side of the screen. Plug your numbers in, P1V1 is P2V2. Solve for P2, you should get the answer of 1.8, and in this case, it's atmospheres. You might see millimetres of mercury, mmHg, or tor, uh, pascals, kilopascals. Pascals, kilopascals tend to be what the IB do. Okay, Guy Lussac, Guy Lussac. Who knows how to pronounce that? Probably not me. Uh, P1 over T1 is P2 over T2. So constant volume, the pressure of an ideal gas, we'll talk about an ideal gas at the end, is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. So in this case, we've got a temperature of 300 K, it's already in Kelvin, which is great. Uh, the pressure is three atmospheres, so we've got uh, T1 and we've got P1. The pressure, what's the new pressure? So we want to solve for P2, when T2 is 900 K. So P2, the new pressure, is your known, your initial, uh, times your new divided by your initial, which gives you nine atmospheres. And they're very happy. Is that the Grinch that's spraying deodorant on? I'm not sure. Dalton's law, not particularly on the IB, uh, they don't mention it, but it is one of the gas laws, so we'll include it. All it's saying is the total pressure is the sum of the individual pressures above the liquid. Okay. So nitrogen is collected over water at 40 degrees C, so we have to keep the other variables constant. Remember that, that's a theme through this little presentation. The vapor pressure of water at 40 degrees C is 7.38. What's the partial pressure of nitrogen at 99 when the total pressure is 99.42? Well, the total is the sum of the individuals, so it's just simple arithmetic. The pressure of the nitrogen must be 92.04 kilopascals. And then we can put them together. We can do P1V1 over T1 is P2V2 over T2. Um, because that P1V1 over T1 is a constant, we can PV equals NRT. P is pressure. Now, this is where we have to be careful. If the pressure is in, is in kilopascals, then the volume is going to be in decimeters cubed. If the volume is in pascals, then the um, volume needs to be in meters cubed. Don't forget that. Okay, kilopascals, decimeters cubed, pascals, meters cubed. As if not more important, because this is very, very useful. Why is it so useful? Well, at little n is little m over big M and we can rearrange to solve for big M, which is the molar mass. So if we know the pressure, the volume, and the temperature, and the amount in moles, we can work out the molar mass of an unknown compound. That makes it very powerful. Here's a good example. A sample with 0 0.55 moles of gas. Sometimes they might just give you grams. You have to change to moles. Using moles is mass over molecular mass. Uh, one of 5.7 kilopascals, remember kilopascals is going to give me an answer in decimeters cubed, which is the same as liters, and 27 degrees C. And the other thing, the other point I've been making is that you need to convert your degree C to Kelvin, so we need to add 273. So PV equals NRT, so V is going to NRT over P, N, 0 0.55 given in the question, 8.3 liters per kilopascals, that's in your data booklet, and 300 is 27 degrees C plus 273, divided by the pressure, which is already in kilopascals, 105.7. Plug that into your calculator. 13 litres is the new volume.
at the end of a question, it may well ask you, it often does ask you, what are the assumptions of the ideal gas law? Of course, it applies to ideal gases, but stating that much of an obvious response is going to get you how many marks? Zero. So the things that you need to say, let's start at the bottom. Um, they don't, the, the ideal gas equation assumes that the gases don't react. So let's say you've got nitrogen and hydrogen. They're going to react together and make ammonia, carb, uh, gaseous carbon, if you've atomized it, and oxygen and make carbon dioxide. So it, it, it assumes that there is no reaction between gases. That means it works better at lower temperatures, because at higher temperatures, uh, most things will eventually react. Uh, there are no forces acting on the molecules, so they have perfectly elastic collisions where there is no exchange of energy. That will give you another mark. Normally a two-mark question, this. The volume is negligibly small. It actually assumes that the molecule itself has zero volume, not that the, the, the bulk, the matrix, the, the, the actual uh, sample that you've got has zero volume, but the molecule itself has zero volume. It's not a bad approximation to make. Um, and that the gas has a large number of molecules which are in random motion. Okay, so they're going in straight lines, uh, they have no volume, and they don't react, which is obviously uh, not uh, reality. But it does apply in many, many cases. Okay, so it's a very useful equation. But those are the limitations. Give you two marks, get any two of those, you got two marks. Key points from the gas laws, what you must do always, temperature in Kelvin. What you put in, you get out. It's quite a good moral for life, isn't it? Units of pressure could be pascals, kilopascals, if you're doing the IB, if you're doing uh, the American system, tors or millimetres of mercury, or if you're old England in the A-level, you might be doing atmospheres. The ideal gas equation is really important. If you're using uh, pressure in pascals, the volume is metres cubed. Pressure is kilopascals, the volume is decimetres cubed. Make sure you can convert between those two quantities. And temperature is always, always in Kelvin.